Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone to Hickox Baptist Church this morning. I'll ask Brother Michael White if you will to open us in prayer this morning. Thank you for uh, the freedom that we can just come into your house, see our brothers and sisters, and hear the sweet fellowship and see the smiles. And Lord, we just thank you for encouragement. We thank you for your word that you provide us so you can teach us how we should live and walk and think and act. And we praise you for that. We just pray that everything that's said and done this morning, Lord, we just bring your glory and honor in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Oh. I tried to get her out of the Sunday school classes this morning and let you know that we wasn't having children's church this morning. Uh, Amberly and some of her family's a little feeling down this morning, so if you will, remember them in prayer. And I know that there's several others around us that are sick. Remember all of them. As far as the calendar goes, January the 31st be ladies quilting at 10 a.m. February the 13th. Children will be performing during the morning service and will be having a Valentine's Day party following in the social hall. There will also be a church conference following the evening service on the 13th. And on March the 9th, we'll be putting the Bibles together again. That takes everybody that can make it. That's, that's a big deal. I don't know how many we're shooting for this time as far as the Bibles go. I think we did around 10,000 last time or something like that. But anybody that can be a part of that, it's a blessing. And uh, that's just spreading the Lord's word in places that we can't reach. Pancakes and sausage, too. Pancakes and sausage. Uh, that's all I got this morning. There was 53 in Sunday school. Please invite someone to come be with us. Thank you. Y'all notice before he gets down, don't you look at there, he went to Florida and he come back, now he's a hey dude. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to pay for that directly somehow or another. All right, if you would like to help in the choir, y'all come up and help us. We're going to be a little fast and furious this morning. Don't need no book, don't need nothing, it's all going to be on the screen, you think? All right. Y'all come on and help us out right quick. Whoever, whosoever will. Two, three, one, I don't care. Sister Debbie, help Brother Ronnie up here. If he goes to fall, run. They coming. They coming. So all oh, let's all stand together. We're gonna sing right fast like look what the I'm I'm sorry. This is the day the Lord has made. We're gonna do it twice.
want you to do the hokey pokey and welcome everybody here, all right? You got to turn around, unless you're on the back row. I found out this morning why you sit on the back road. They just, if you ain't got the wind enough to come any closer to the front, you sit in the back. That's what Jimmy Anderson told me. But anyway, I know that's not true. Uh, but anyway, we're going to sing one more. Glad you're all here. Now, you guys, there's a special part right here. And our leader, Brother Larry, you watch his lips and sing with him, okay? <laughs> all right? Just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. stop the music just to hear you guys so y'all let her ring all right here we go
we're going to sing two as a melody. We're going to sing through one twice, and we're going right into the uncloudy day. So look what the Lord has done. And if you're standing where I am looking out, I have seen what the Lord has done. Some of you have been sick, and now you're here. And uh, I'm glad of that. So help us sing.
when Jarrett said it was 53 this morning, I thought he was talking about the degrees in the church. <laughs> but anyway, that was years, years ago, we had a little group waiting on the shout in uh, Enron, in Allen, a few more. Uh, sang a lot, and we went to other churches, and we, and we got invited to sing at a lot of, a lot of funerals, and, which is a, a great honor to me. But uh, anyway, we got asked one time, and, and Brother Allen was the one leading it, and he couldn't make it, so Ronnie and I wound up uh, doing it, just the two of us, and we had never done that before. And I had set my guitar down waiting. We were going to do Amazing Grace, and first of all, I didn't know there was 19 verses to Amazing Grace, but we, we learned that that day. So we, we had a little discussion. We cut it back to about four, but I'd set my guitar down and went to put it on, and the strap got twisted all sideways. It wadded up like a uh, like a set of jumper cables trying to, to hang up. But anyway, so everybody was waiting on us, and we were in the old sanctuary over there. And luckily, we had a lot of plants and everything hiding us. But anyway, we when we got through, uh, we shook one another's hand, patted one on the back, and thanked that we made it through the day. Anyway, so since then. <laughs> And after that, I wrote this song coming home from work one night, and uh, it didn't take long to write it, but it, it, it was hard trying to stay on the road, trying to write it by the dome of the pickup truck, and I was told I should have pulled off the side of the road, and I should have, but anyway, I wanted to sing it for y'all this morning, so I don't mind. They lay my body down to rest Don't cry for me Cause I've been blessed All the angels will sing To bring me home Then i look upon My Savior's throne Cause I've been blessed I've been saved Getting up to heaven What a wonderful day I've been blessed And I've been loved Can't wait to get a hug From my Lord above Then I'll get on my knees and I'll bow to him He'll say, welcome home from that world of sin Just take your time, son, and look around You have family here, this is your home now I've been blessed I've been saved Getting up to heaven What a wonderful day I've been blessed And I've been loved Can't wait to get a hug From my Lord above There was all my friends and my family They all smiled and welcomed me I've been blessed I've been saved Getting up to heaven, what a wonderful day I've been loved Can't wait to get a hug from my Lord above Can't wait to get a hug from my Lord above I can always count on Brother David something peppy. I like that. If you have your Bibles, open it with me to the uh, third chapter of Daniel. I'll tell you how this struck me this week. I 
we decided we might need to use the fireplace a little bit. And uh, boy, it has felt good. And I got to thinking about that, building that fire. And, you know, if you got one of them wood heaters, there's things you can do to control the heat and this and that and the other. But yet there's always a fire, but you can control things. And uh, I thought about this, this particular story. Um, and it's about the three Hebrew boys that was thrown into fiery furnace. Uh, but the topic come to me about what are you doing when the heat's turned up? What are you doing when you know that it, the fire may be hot? I want us to look at that this morning in the Word of God. If you would, uh, look with me there at the, the bottom end of verse 15 and stand with me. I want to read a few scriptures. It might have been 53 in Brother David's uh, room because it was about that in my office, but it's not that in here. I can tell you that. Look at the bottom of verse 15. It says this right here. This is when Nebuchadnezzar had built this golden image, and he was kind of blackballed by some of the guys that was around there to write a decree that no one uh, that worshipped this golden image that they would be thrown into a fiery furnace. And they caught, of course, the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, not bowing down because they had the true and living God and they wouldn't bow before no other God. And they stood and not done it. So they brought them before Shadrach, I mean, brought him before King Nebuchadnezzar. And it says this in verse 15 at the end, it says, And who, this is Nebuchadnezzar speaking, And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? What he didn't know was they weren't in his hands. They were in the Lord's hands. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able. Can you say that with me? Able. That means he's capable. He, he's got the power. He said to deliver us from the burning fire furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. Now notice the next verse. But if he don't, he says, but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve, not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, full of fury, and the form of his visage changed. In other words, he, I believe he turned red-faced. He got mad. Changed against uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that, the, that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. Let's pray. Father, this morning as we look in your word in this very familiar passage, one of my heroes of the Bible, these three men, Lord, that stood for you. And, and of course, Daniel, who loved you so much. God, I pray you through me, God, and the words that you give me, Father, that this would encourage us in all the things we're battling nowadays. God, some battling the same things, some battling different things. But God, we know it's a battle. But we do know one day, Lord, when we leave this place, as Brother David was singing, Lord, we get there, all that'll be gone. We'll be going to the land of the uncloudy day. God, where there will be no sorrow, no gloomy days, God, and no hardships. No more dying, no more crying. God, all will be well. God, bless this message today. Do with it with what you want to do. God, open our hearts that we receive it. And all God's people said, Amen. What a time in the days of the uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were favored over a lot of people. They were in high positions in those days. And, and uh, for them not to do what they'd done, it wouldn't have bothered Nebuchadnezzar so much had some of the Chaldeans and all that uh, disliked them because he were, they were favored. And the only reason they was favored is they were blessed by God, and they seemed to be smarter, fairer, and uh, it just seemed like everything that they done turned to good, and that's because God's blessings was upon him. But we look and see at this moment, he told them, he said, boys, at the sound of all these instruments, I want you to bow down, and, and they didn't, boy, and he got mad. It embarrassed him in front of all the people. You know, I've heard people say, it wasn't to bother me so bad if they hadn't have done it in front of everybody. Well, I got news for you, they did it in front of everybody. 
And they told him and they spoke on behalf of their Lord and Savior and their faith. I'm going to tell you, tremendous faith that these three young men had here as they stood. And I, I just like to, uh, to feel, I want you to know that if you are a child of God, you're in God's hands and nobody else's hands. And if he's in, in no, the Bible says that no man can pluck you from our Father's hands. You cannot be taken away. When God has saved you, you are saved until the day of redemption. You are, uh, he, he, he's got his arms wrapped around you and no man can pluck you out of the Father's hands. And that should be good news. These boys knew that. They knew that their salvation would carry them to death or into heaven. It didn't matter which way it was. So we look here and then Nebuchadnezzar speaking out uh, uh, because of uh, politics in those days, he says, who is that God? Is he able to save you from all that? You know, who is that God? Nebuchadnezzar was acting as though he was God. Let me tell you, no one in this world is God. There's only one God, and, he, and he, is, he lives in heaven. And his throne is the everlasting throne. He's the creator of the world. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego spoke to him. He says, listen, O king. He says, we're not careful to answer you in other words they had made up their mind they had made up their mind it's kind of like the woman on oh brother where art thou when she's walking along there you know her husband she told the kids that her husband got run over by a train when he really didn't and uh, he was trying to get back engaged with her and make her his wife again and uh, she says i have counted the three and said my peace so they boys has counted to three and said their piece and they said, we ain't careful to answer you. Listen, don't be afraid when you get an opportunity to stand for the Lord Jesus Christ. And not only that, give him credit when something great happens in your life, uh, whether you recover from something or uh, a bad scene or whatever it may be, that's a perfect opportunity. It is our testimony that God wants us to share with other people. So they looked here and he says, be it, uh, he said, but if not, he said, be it known unto the O King Nebuchadnezzar that we serve a God, uh, we serve not thy gods and worship the golden image which thou hast. Nebuchadnezzar got so mad, so mad. Now I want to go back to what I titled this, turning up the heat. The Bible says that uh, Nebuchadnezzar turned to his men there. He says, I want it done one, seven times. You can look at that one in seven, the way they spoke there in the Hebrew. It could be 17 times or seven times. It don't matter. It's hotter than it had ever been heated. Hot. Now, that's hot. Now, I want you to realize that a lot, of, a lot of times when we think of fire in the Bible, we think of hell because hell is a place that is a literal fire. It is a place that uh, we know is in the heart of the earth and it was enlarged when paradise was taken away and given the space there and God made it into the third heavens to prepare a place for you and I. So it's a big place. It's a big place and there's the homes of those who never accepted Christ as their Savior. Those that didn't believe in Him and died in that situation. That's where they're going to be. And it said that Nebuchadnezzar got so mad that he wanted to turn up the heat. He wanted to turn up the heat. Well, I thought of some things, and, and I was sitting there yesterday morning by myself, and I was trying to keep the fire warm. Not, the fire wasn't keeping me warm. I was keeping it warm because I kept plenty of wood on the fire. And I was thinking about that. I said, you know, I know there's three things uh, uh, that, has to, that you have to have in order for fire to work. One of those things is you've got to have fuel. Fuel is a main ingredient that what you got. You got to have oxygen uh, to have a fire because if you smother a, a fire out and don't let it have oxygen, it'll go out. But not only that, you got to have a, a thing called heat. The very thing that said here, heat, oxygen, and fuel is what you got to have, and that creates a fire. So we see here. So what did they do? Well, I think what they done, they added more fuel to the fire. And they wanted to punch that fire up and make it hot as it had ever been. And it had gotten hot. Now, it had really gotten hot. But I thought about that. You know, who controls the heat in the fire? Well, I got news for you. It's just like you girls. Uh, Y'all know what you bake circuit, certain cakes on. Isn't it a wonderful thing that y'all can control the temperature in which to bake a cake? Isn't it a wonderful thing? You know exactly what to do when those biscuits get done that you turn the broil on at the top and you can brown them things golden brown that'll make a fat preacher laugh. I mean, just it's so wonderful. You know, y'all know exactly. To be able to control the fire, you know, uh, 
fire, uh, we don't think about it that way, but anything that creates energy and, and, you know, that makes energy, there's heat involved. There's heat involved, it, you know, friction that, that, that creates uh, static electricity. And, and through that, things may get hot and, uh, and warm up. But in, in the side of all that, uh, fire is a wonderful thing, but heat is what we, we've harnessed it and we can control it, and it's a beautiful thing. Now, sometimes when it gets out of control, as you see on TV, and man can't do nothing with it, listen, sometimes it gets to only God. You know, I've even heard the firefighters in California say, the only way this thing's going to be stopped is there's an intervention by God to come in and stop it. Why is that? Because God controls the heat of a fire. He controls all the elements of the three things that causes a fire, but God can control the heat. You know, he can have fire that won't even have no heat. And I, I thought about this, and I come up with an acrostic of the word heat. Now, it may be corny to you, but uh, I'll be honest. I sit a long time thinking and praying, God, give me, give me this thing. I know you want this thing. So if you want to write it down, you can write it down. But heat is spelled H-E-A-T, okay? And, and here it is, uh, just very rednecky and, and short. It's heavenly energy with an approved temperature. Heavenly energy with an approved temperature. You think about that. These boys is fixing to experience that. Nebuchadnezzar, he took himself to be God. He's got it one seven times hotter, hotter than this thing's ever been before. Now that'll do it. Why did it take so much heat in his mind that it would do away with the children of God? Because he knew he was up against a massive God, a God with all kind of power. He doesn't seen it through Daniel. He doesn't seen it through these boys that this God, and he wanted to prove to the people that he was king over that he could be. In in full control. Well, I got news for you, my friend. These boys was not in the king's hand. And if you'll notice, the, he, the Hebrew boys here says, Our God will deliver us out of your hand, O king. I'm not in your hand. I, and, and what dawned on me when I was writing these things down in the house, I was going, uh, that song come to He's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world. And you know, and he does. We think the world is so massive and all like that, and we're just sitting on the, you know how them old boys used to spin that basketball on their finger? Well, that's, uh, God's got his finger out there, and we're just that small, just a little tiny ball on in his finger. And really, we're just a piece of sand on the ocean compared to what he is. But he loved us so much that he died for that little piece of dirt in my life and in yours. So we go on with the story. They, 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 they filled it up, and here's when the king got mad. And in verse 19 again, he says, Then Nebuchadnezzar, full of fury, and, and the form of his visions was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He says, Therefore he spake and commanded they should heat. There's that word again. You know, don't forget, that's heavenly energy and with an approved temperature. Heat this thing, uh, uh, the furnace, one seven times hotter than it was ever wanted or ever usually Heated, and he commanded the most mighty men that they were that was in his army to blind to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. You think about that. Why in the world? You know, in my mind, I think about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Not little like Zacchaeus. I think they were a normal guy. I knew they grew well because you know when they had the little. Uh, uh, food test that uh, Daniel's boys was a lot fairer, stronger, and smarter, and all like that. So they was probably normal-sized guy. Why would you come and get with the hundreds of people that were there that you had to get the biggest, meanest-looking guys in your army to come tie up three little old boys? I mean, why would you do that? It was a, it was a, a show of authority. It was a show of power. Like he couldn't have just did it with just the common people that were there. Because, you know, the common people was the ones that wanted them thrown into the fire. They were scared of the God, didn't, did not like that Daniel prayed three times a day, didn't like that them boys prayed three times a day, didn't like their God that they served. Because you know why? Because it called them out on the wrongdoings that they believed in. And all the fornication and all the things that they'd done in their life, God was not pleased with that, and they would call it out as it was. Listen, my friend, you know, it's easy life being a Christian. I'll be honest with you. The rules are easy. He says, don't have no other God before him, and that's really, if you do that, then you won't have no other problem with him. That's simple, isn't it? That's simple, but yet how hard it is. Because we got a devil, and, you know, somewhat like uh, Nebuchadnezzar, the, de uh, the devil was in Nebuchadnezzar here at this time, that were prod you and show you his power that you will be forced into it. It's kind of like 
in some of these job things, and I won't get on this much, but how that they're forcing some people to take the shot when they don't want the shot. Y'all know what I'm saying? And some has just said, I'm not going to do it, and they leave their jobs, you know, and all like that. Well, let me tell you. Whether the shot is right or wrong, I'm not getting into all that. I'm just telling you, that's just part how the devil will work. He'll use numbers. He'll use size. He'll use all kind of uh, things that may not make sense to make you do some things. And that's what's happening here. I don't believe if Nebuchadnezzar would have been in his right mind, he'd have done these things. But yet he had a, a big force of people wanting him to do it. So they tied him up, took the most mighty men that they had, and he cast him in there. Know what he says? He bound them down. Now, did they kind of do anything special? No, the Bible says in, in the next verse or two that uh, they left their coats on, their hats on, their hosing on, and, and all like that. And they bound them with ropes and, and all like that. And they took these men and they threw them into the fire. And verse 21 says, and these men were bound in their coats. They're their hosing and their hats and, and their other gar garments were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. He says, therefore, because the king's commandment was so urgent <clears throat> and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the, of, the, of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and the Abednego. Now, I don't want you to forget this fire. Uh, you know, that fire has heat in it. Heat is what killed these guys. The flame isn't what done it. It's the heat of the flame that does it, and that's what fire does. Fire is usually burned some other type of fuel with the aid of oxygen to create the heat that makes it fire, and it does. We cook with it. We do. We uh, burn our, in our fireplaces with it. We do all kind of things with it, but it can get out of control, and in the wrong hands, it's a bad tool. It's a real bad tool. And I think the folks in California has realized is it's a great tool if you'll prescribe burn to keep the wildfires down. I know they used to do it all the time. I mean, it was just something we'd done. We'd, we'd burn off all that stuff so it would kind of beat the bushes down where it won't get a, a wild. You wouldn't have a wildfire. You could have a control fire. But today we're going to talk about a wildfire, and we're going to talk about a control fire. God, heavenly energy. Now remember that. Approved by God. The temperature approved by God. And that's what's going to happen here. Nebuchadnezzar done that. It, this fire got so hot. Have you ever been by a real hot fire? I don't know about y'all. I reckon I should say this on radio, TV, or whatever we own right now. But back in the day, if you wanted to get rid of a bunch of big old trees and all there, if you had you a bunch of old uh, truck tires or skitter tires and car tires, you could throw them under there and light them babies up, and that would make a hot fire. I'm going to tell you what, it will make you hot. It will burn you up. You'll have to turn like this. You like a, you know, you've seen them hot dogs on them things, how they roll with the heat, you know, how they cook. That's the way you got to be. You cold on this side, you're hot, about to burn up on the other side, and all like that. Well, that's how hot this fire was. You couldn't hardly stand it. But those men, because Nebuchadnezzar, his command was so strong that these mighty men went to throw them in. The Bible says that the, the heat consumed them. The heat consumed them. It didn't say that the flames got them. It didn't say that. The heat consumed them. The heat was off the flame. The flame didn't have to get to them. The flames was down inside. But the heat got to them. That it, you would have thought right there, if that would have happened, these men would have found. But I can tell you, all the control that Nebuchadnezzar had at that point, he couldn't separate the flame and the heat to, to kill Nebuchadnezzar, I mean to kill Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and not kill his own people because he don't have a heavenly control. He don't have the heavenly control that Jesus has, the, that the God has, and it's in his control. And it burned his own men up at that time. What a sacrifice these men had. And notice in verse 23. He says, and these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down into the uh, midst of the fire, uh, burning fiery furnace. You know, at that point, I believe if I'd have been one of those type of Christians at that time, that was straddling the fence. You know what I'm saying? One that was straddling the fence. I kind of like what Nebuchadnezzar do, but I like what the Lord does, and I can't make up my mind on which side. I believe I'd have turned and run at that moment. When I saw the very boys that they intended for the fire to, to consume, did not consume them. Don't you know that they put them in as a human shield going into that fire to push them into the fire? But the problem is that the fire uh, was under control by King Jesus. He was under control by the God of heaven. He had all of it. He, you know, he, 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 it was full of energy, yes, but he, the approved temperature was mighty cool uh, on them boys. He didn't approve that temperature to eat them boys up. He, he approved the temperature to burn Nebuchadnezzar's guys up. Nebuchadnezzar wanted it to happen the other way. But see, he wasn't in control. God was in control. He says these men were thrown into the burning fire furnace. I'd have left at that time. 
I'd have just took off at that time. There's, I wouldn't have been able to hang around. I'm going, uh-oh. They have messed with the wrong God. They have dilly dagged with the wrong three guys. They could have picked anybody else, and this might have worked, but I'm telling you, I'd have left at that moment. But no, they didn't. They thought they had their way. Now notice what happens. When God comes around, when you and I, we think it's pretty bad and the heat's turning up and the troubles, that represents troubles in our life and, and stuff going on. When the heat gets turned up, it seems like it's more and more and more. Y'all wouldn't know that the phone calls and conversations I had were the devil's turning the heat up on all God's people and this happens and that happens and this happens and it's just at some point you get fed up with it. Well, let me tell you, God has the approved temperature control in his hand he has to approve temperature nothing will touch you unless it passes through his hand we look here and these boys were thrown in there Nebuchadnezzar don't you know it, it, it's kind of you, you remember when Daniel was thrown into the lion's den and the king come up there and, uh, and he says oh Daniel and he says oh king live forever man he was excited he was excited because he loved Daniel and he loved Daniel's God but being pushed by politics, he, he decided to allow him to throw him into the lion's den. But here it says, Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished. What was he astonished about? Well, the first thing was that the heat had no effect. Could you imagine them boys going in there and if they could have got their hands together, the boy, it's feeling pretty good in here. <laughs> hey, I like that. That ain't so bad at all. It had to be cold weather. You say, why do you say that? Well, they had jackets and hats on. So it must have been felt, old fire felt pretty good. You know what? Even in the summertime, if you come here one night, we had a gathering, and uh, Jutton in and Cooter got out there, and they built a big old fire right out there, and it could be 85 degrees at night. You know what you would do? Most of you would gather around that fire and sweat. And by the fire will draw stuff to it. I mean, I don't know why it is. You build a fire. They say if you build a ball field, they'll come. But if you build a fire, they'll come. We used to run a FFA turkey shoot when I was in school to, to raise money for that, and nobody starts showing up. But when they seen that fire on the edge of town, son, them pickup truck was pulling in left and right. And the first thing they done went over there and backed up to the fire. Backed up to the fire. Be careful where you're warming. Be careful where you've backed up to. Because a lot of times, especially in uncommon weather, that this would happen. Sometimes the Bible even speaks that Peter warmed by the fire of some people there when he had denied Jesus. And he backed up to the fire, which made him part of them. They were warmed by the same thing. And we see that Peter was there, and they recognized him. Light, the light comes off of the fire as well. It recognized him, but yet he was willing to warm. But don't warm with the things of this world, my friend. The Bible says a little bit of leaven, leaven if the whole lump. If you're not careful, that fire will get to feeling so good for you, do you'll back right off in it, and it will consume you, and it'll have you, and you'll want more and more of the fire. Uh, we let our fire go out after last weekend. Uh, I told my wife, I said, it's not going to be that cold in here. And Monday night, uh, I was in my pajamas and my t-shirt and all in there and I felt more drafts that night when the fire went out than I ever had you know I'm going I got used to the fire and I liked the fire even it wasn't as cold it wasn't freezing it wasn't like that it was like in the 50s but there was a draft you got to be careful of the fire that you warm with because what it'll do it'll make you want it you'll have a desire to want more and more of it and that's the things of this world if you're not careful you'll fall in love with it and you'll like the the look of it you'll like the feel of it you'll like the taste of it you'll like all the things of this world in it and for all you know it you're consumed by that fire that sinful fire well, these boys were thrown in there. And then why, the reason why Nebuchadnezzar was astonished because he had men falling dead outside the fire. And I don't believe that they had to push them. I think at that point when they fell, I believe Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego walked on in. I believe they just walked on in and fell there into the fiery furnace. And he was astonished at what happened. Notice this. It says, and he rose up in haste. What, well, of course he did. How did they get out of my sight when my men fell dead and they disappeared off into the flames? How did that happen? Well, you got to know it's a heavenly energy that's approved by God's temperature. We're in his uh, climate control, if you will. 
It, we're in the uh, sin climate control, if you will. If you ask and give it to him, he will cool it down or warm it up for you however he needs, and it will not consume you in this life. It will not burn you. It will not consume you. He said, Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, he says, Did we not cast three men bound in the midst of this fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. I think Nebuchadnezzar had gotten close. How gotten close enough to look into this fiery furnace. You know, I don't believe he got as close as his men got close because I believe the state of his heart, he'd have been consumed by that fire. It's, it's amazing that he commanded somebody to get that close, but he wasn't willing to get that close to himself. You know why? Because it killed him. And I got news for you, friend, in this walk that we live in. I know in some of the sins that will find us out, you know, it, it, it'll get to us. There's some of these sins that will take your life that it will take your life and you get consumed in it. And, and, and heaven knows you got the eyes and the heart to see how it has done and will do for some people, and yet you still stumble and fall and fall into that same trap. Let me tell you, my friend, do as Nebuchadnezzar did at this point. Don't get that close, and when you do, you need to run the other way. He didn't get as close as his men did because it killed him. But he got in line where he could look in there, and he saw that, and he said, man, you know, one, two, three one two three one two whoa he saw something a little bit different <laughs> man i bet you something just just chills when it's done went over my body it's done went over my body let me tell you when the heat's turned up just start looking around that other person will show up <laughs> Whew. Mm. You got to be looking for him. You got to know he's in control of the thermostat. He answered and said, He says, Lo, I see four. <laughs> Hallelujah. And they're not bound. Are you bound by something? Is there something in your life that you just can't shake? Give it to, give it to the Lord. He can burn that that's got you. You know what happened why they weren't bound? The fire burnt the ropes off of these guys and it did not burn them because there was an heavenly Energy that was approved temperature was about them. You get them ropes off fire, but you don't touch my boys. You burn them ropes off that they were bound by. You burn that sin off, you hear me? But don't you dare touch mine. And I see that in there. He says, I see four men. Not only that, for someone who never knew. Let me tell you, if you ever doubted how long Jesus has been around, my friend, hang on. He's found here in the book of Daniel. He says, they were loosed walking in the midst of the fire and have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like who? The Son of God. And who is that? That's Jesus. Now, we know he didn't arrive in person until Matthew Right? He'd been around here all the time. And he looked down. How did he know? Well, let me tell you, my friend, when you see him face to face, you know this is the first time that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego ever saw him. The first time he ever saw him. It wasn't like the baby in the manger. Let me tell you, when he was here, he was a full-grown God. He was a full-grown man, and he appeared in the person. He was in the flesh walking around with these men. And the Bible says that they had no hurt on them. Let me ask you this morning, how many of you woke up hurting? I did. How many of you got uh, some heart hurt going on? Most of us have. Things going on in your life that's just breaking your heart. Let me tell you, it's because you're not willing yourself to turn it over to the Lord. Let me tell you, Jesus appeared in the midst of the fiery furnace. 
He proved to them that this world has nothing on him. I can stand in the fire as long as I'm standing with him. Nothing can touch me unless it passes through his hand. He controls the heat of the fire. He controls the energy in which it has. And let me tell you, my friend, he controls your destiny. It was done on the cross of Calvary where his blood was shed. It ran down there and there's plenty of room there for you to kneel and ask for forgiveness. And it'll wash your sins away as as far as the east is from the west and there you will never never be plucked out of his hand my friend never how do you know do you know what to look for unfortunately in these days and times you think in a spiritual mind that when things as tough as they are with all the sickness and all like that, that where you'd find, where, where would you find a lot of people? Well, you're going to find a lot at the hospital because something's done gone too long. But boy, when I was back in the kid and something went on in the, in the emergency, or something emergency went on in the neighborhood, all of a sudden there was a bunch of cars parked down there at the local church. They didn't lock churches back them days. Someone would show up and you open that door and you see all the cars and some people wanting to know what was going on there. I'll tell you what was going on there was having, a, it wasn't a prayer visual, it was a prayer on their knees praying to God that they would touch whoever, whatever's happened in that community and it would make a difference. Let me tell you, but nowadays if you go there's a big crowd, you probably don't want to go in there. There's probably some stuff going on in there that you don't want no part of. And you know what? It don't matter how cold, how much it's raining, or, or how hot it is, they'll still join up. But let me tell you, that's what the devil done. He's got them under his climate control. He lets them know that you can still do this and enjoy that. It, it never made no sense to me because I never was a drinking man. But always on the cowboys and all that, if they were somewhere cold, they had the first thing they had, they had, they had, had a shot of that rock gut whiskey to warm them up. Well, let me tell you, my friend, when I need some love and I feel cold and indifferent and I'm all the way from here, I need a shot of love from my Savior. I need a, a, a moment for him to visit with me. I need to get on my knees and call him and say, Lord, I don't know what I've done. Or if I do know what I've done, I'm sorry. And I'll feel the warming spirit of God. It's so warm that you have chill butts running up and down your legs and the hair stand up on your head. And man, what a feeling. And it's a comforting moment at that time and you don't want him to leave. You want it to be right there. If you never experienced that, I'm afraid you may not never know him. It happened the moment that he saved me. That moment that night, he, he, he touched my heart, and I went down there. I just cried and cried and cried. Why? Because I realized that at that moment, there was someone who's going to keep me, this old mortal body from going to a literal hell. But let me tell you, my friends, there is a burning, fiery furnace. And it burns today. And the Lord don't have control of the thermostat down there. He chose not to. The prince of the world has it. He can't use it up here unless you're willing to back up to his fire. That will burn you. The Lord offers one that you could back up to that would never burn. He says, come and drink of this water that you may never thirst again. You'll never want anything else again. This will satisfy your every need. So where are you when the heat's turned up? Are you close enough or do you know him that he'll come? And you know what? If he don't pull you out of there, you notice that Jesus never came out of that fire. He didn't come out. Nebuchadnezzar got them guys. I don't know how long they had to wait to cool the fire down for them to get out. Or they might have just called them. They just walked out of there. Could you imagine them folks going, Ooh. I'm going to be like my nephew when the coon dog could not find a crippled coon under the tree. Under the tree. And it was so thick they couldn't escape. And he was coming their way. And he was calling Uncle Caleb, Uncle Caleb, tell old Hank, old Tank to come over here and get this coon. If you don't, I'm fixing to leave the country. I left the country that day, my friend. 
out of fear of the God that was in there, a God that's got control of the, of the heavenly energy, the, uh, the temperatures approved by him. It could have got me a thousand feet away or it could have got me one foot away, but they walked in the midst of it and it did not hurt them. The key word in this here, of course, was heat. But the other two I like, no hurt. I don't know anybody who likes hurt. I don't like to hit myself with a hammer on the finger. But I sure don't like things to happen in my, in my heart. The hurtingest things I ever had was invisible things to some. But it happens and it tears your heart apart. You got them and I got them. How do you think the Heavenly Father feels? when one of his has backed up to the worldly fire. My friend, please don't do that. He could turn up the heat and it would consume him. There's a lot of things. Don't be afraid of COVID. If you leave this world in COVID and you're a child of God, you go into where you, you're vaccinated 100% and it can't get there. And the vaccination was a vial of blood that ran down the cross of Calvary that was injected in you the very moment that you asked him to come in your life. Nothing can touch me unless it passes through his hands. I got that security today. My friend, if you don't have that, you can. Think about that as we stand and sing a song of invitation. I pray that the Lord will talk to you. Father, today, we realize you have ultimate power. God, I know where I want to be when the heat's turned up. Because you will not let the flame of this world hurt me. And God, if there's one under the sound of my voice who's never made that decision, God, I pray that it will. Because there's a, there's a fire in hell, Lord, that will hurt. But it'll never go away. It's not a consuming fire. It's an eternal fire. God, I pray today, God, that the Holy Spirit would break hearts. And God, they would hear from you. Not only hear it, but react. Only you can save. Save now, Lord Jesus. In your precious name, amen. <laughs> Trust in Him. Only trust Him. He will save you now. Better now might not be later. Amen. It's good to have Brother Mike and Sister Lois back with us today. I'm going to ask Brother Mike if he would to close us.